Tel Aviv was recently named the world's most expensive city, and the rest of Israel isn't far behind. Gas prices, housing, food, everything's expensive. Services, expensive. Life in Israel is expensive, but that does not mean that everybody's rich and can afford it. There's plenty of people that are living below the poverty line. So today I want to tell you about the poverty in Israel. This is a yearly publication by an organization that we partner with that gives out food packages to the needy. They have contracts with the biggest uh, supermarket chains and whatever goods cannot be sold by the supermarket because it's getting close to an expiration date. There's a law that says that if a product is some products, not everything, but if a product is two weeks before the the expiration date, you can't even put it out on the shelves. So what do you do with it? Well, this organization will take it off your hands and will distribute it to the needy. They have a very big warehouse. They're moving now to a new warehouse that's twice the size of the previous one because the need is always growing. So let me read off some statistics. This is actually the 2021 report. I did not have a copy of the 2023 report. That one includes all the wartime data and it's staggering. This one came out in the middle of COVID and that crisis hit the country big time. By the way, if you wanna see this, I can make this available. Write to me in the comments, I'll send it. Key data. Okay, there's like six or seven things here. Let me just mention a couple. Uh, the percentage of households that are almost in poverty, lower class, rose from 14% before the crisis to a current of 23%. 23.6%. And then the war started, and I'm sure that rose more. Um, 651,900 households in Israel are living in poverty. That's 22% of the population. There's 2.5 million individuals in Israel living in poverty, of which 1,118,000 are children. Since the COVID crisis broke out, the middle class decreased from 58.3% of Israeli society to a current of 48.3% before the war. Poverty in Israel is a real thing. It probably doesn't look the same. There's a lot of people that are struggling, gas prices are on the rise, food prices are on the rise. Food to begin with is expensive in Israel. Produce is expensive in Israel. So receiving a package, like this organization that gives out food packages every month, they have a big list of people. They gather these products from the supermarkets, they package them up and they deliver them. They have groups of volunteers that come and help them package and then they have events, people come and grab their box or stuff gets delivered. There's a lot of people that can't even come and get them, elderly that are basically stuck in their, in their apartments and they can't walk out because of physical limitations or because they just can't, take the public transportation to come and get their box. It's heavy. There's all kinds of limitations. There's also another organization that does a very similar thing, but they do hot meals. There's a lot of uh, companies like uh, IT uh, companies, startups, and, and big corporations that uh, cater to their staff every day. And there's hot meals that get prepared and they do not get eaten. There's also food like surplus food at army bases. What do you do with it? So this, this other organization, collects all the hot food and they have special uh, locations where it's like big dining halls for, for the needy to come and, and have hot meals every day. And they also do the same thing with the uh, produce on the fields. There's fields that may not get picked for one reason or another. For example, there's a surplus crop of potatoes or something one year, right? And you just can't sell it off as a farmer the market's saturated what do you do with it you got to clean the field but it takes money to clean the field so it's easier for you to call up this organization that will do the work without char charging you but they will take all these potatoes off your hands because you can't sell them so they give them away to the needy and they have these distribution centers where people come and and grab uh, a bunch of potatoes of course not only potatoes it's all kinds of produce and not only that there's milk there's bread sometimes uh, bakeries will give away bread that they can't sell or bread that didn't go out, that didn't come out looking the best. So they'll give it away. And there's many people that come and get this kind of stuff. There's families, there's elderly, there's new immigrants that cannot find a well-paying job. All kinds of situations where going out to the store and buying some food for the family is just too expensive and you can't afford it when you have everything else to pay. So in the case of an immigrant family, for example, it doesn't look like they are in need. They just have a very limited budget and they can't spend it. It's very hard to stretch money that's not enough to begin with on very expensive living as we have here in Israel. 
So when I'm talking about poverty in Israel, it doesn't look like in America, for example, where you have uh, people living on the street uh, in tents, or it doesn't look like Mexico, for example. I, I've seen plenty of that, where there's whole areas of whole neighborhoods uh, or areas of town or outside of town that are there's lack of infrastructure, there's lack of services, there's all kinds of poverty. I can tell you some stories about that as well. Generally, you don't see many people begging for food on the street, but that doesn't mean that there's no poverty. When you go to these distribution centers, to these hot meal dining halls, when you see the logistics center of this organization that gives out food packages having to grow twice as big because they need to expand their operations because the needs keep rising and there's more and more people that, that depend on that kind of help, you clearly understand that the problem is real and the war is adding so much more to this problem because we don't even know how long the repercussions of the war will be dragged out and will, will keep affecting the families. The reason I'm talking about poverty in Israel is because I don't see enough people bringing that up. A lot of times Israel is called startup nation. The news will talk about how rich this nation is and they will use that in their narrative to show that Jews do rule the world and take up all the world's money. Yeah, we've heard it all. Well, there's plenty of Jews that don't rule the world. They can't even rule their own lives. And they have to ask for food packages every month. And when your city is getting hit by rockets and you can't even go out and grab your food package because it's risky, it's dangerous outside, and you have to be in a bomb shelter all day long, how do you get fed? Thankfully, there's organizations that deliver food that reach out to these people that look out for people that are in need and keep gathering data and understanding the situation. So if you're interested in receiving this report, I'll happily make that available. And if you have any questions about poverty in Israel, we can talk about it. I'd love to do a live broadcast and have a Q&A session and answer your questions. There's a lot to talk about. And if you come back tomorrow, I'll tell you another story.